So Jess and I were coming back from the studio today and we saw this left out on the side of the street. And it looks pretty good. It's like it's super nice condition. I've seen these shelves before um, in other people's videos. I think it's like an Ikea. Is it an Ikea yeah. drawer thing? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we scooped it up off the side of the street and we're going to use it. It's in great condition. So it's been a while since I did any film photography stuff in the vlog, um, but today we've got some photos, some film photos that I want to develop and finally used up a bunch of rolls. So I shot this roll of film using my Leica. So this is ready to be developed. And we had also shot a bunch of photos on this disposable camera. So this is also ready to be developed. And I'm gonna be doing it here at home. Um, normally when people get these develop developed, they drop them off at either like a CVS or a Photoshop and they take care of everything. But I'm gonna show you how I do it. There's actually a roll of film in here and it is located here in the bottom so i'm just going to get the roll of film out of this camera um, you'll actually notice some of them have like a perforated line um, on the bottom here you can't really see it um, even with your eyes you can't really see it but normally what i do is i just like peel it back a little bit because um, there's pretty much a door here that uh, has the film in it and sometimes it's enough to just pry it open with like a knife so we're just gonna try and So there it is, the door popped open a little bit. And it doesn't matter, you're not really trying to save the camera, but once you have that door open, you're able to slide the film out. So it just slides right out. Um, and this is a normal roll of film, just like the 35 millimeter rolls of film that you buy for 35 millimeter cameras. And uh, they're exactly the same, has the same exact type of roll of film in it. And I could take that out and I could now develop this on my own. The next part is basically getting the film out of these canisters and into this developer tank, which is where I'm going to be pouring the chemicals and everything and develop the film in. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to do this completely in the dark because if I take this film out of the canisters with the light out, it's basically going to ruin the film. So I don't have a dark room, so all of this needs to happen inside of this dark bag. So all of this stuff is going to be essentially placed inside of this bag and I'm going to be doing this blind. Um, but inside of this bag with my hands placed inside um, these armholes, I'm essentially going to take one of these uh, film canisters, going to pop it open to get the film out of it. And then once the film is out of it, I'm going to reel it into these reels and it has this little mechanism so once I kind of slide the film in there and do this action it'll start winding around this uh, this cassette. Once the, both of these rolls are in both of these reels, um, all inside this bag I'm going to be sliding them into this piece right here and then popping it into the tank and then putting this top on top of it. So once the film is in here and this top is on top of the canister, this doesn't let any light inside of it in. So once everything is inside here, I can now take it outside of the bag and it's ready for the next step, which is putting all the liquids in here and developing the film. here in the kitchen now and I have the tank with the two uh, reels of film loaded in and I have my liquids here that are ready to go so what we have in here is developer, Blix, and stabilizer. I have it in this bucket heating up in some water because you need to have it at about 100 degrees uh, temperature when you mix it into the tank 
and I've also got a bottle of water ready and I'm not going to go through the exact steps of how I do this. I'm going to put a link to a video that explains this entire process but I'm going to be pouring these liquids into the container to develop the film and then after the entire process I will have developed film which I can then hang and dry. So after that whole developing process, I hang up the film here in my bathtub and you can kind of see the photos here and you can see that it is now developed. You can see some images in there, uh, but we'll leave it in here for a couple hours to dry off and then we'll take it to the scanner. So it is the next day here. I had let the film dry overnight and now I'm ready to scan it. So the thing that I do next is I cut the film into about six slides per strip just so they're ready to be used in the scanner. And over here I have the Epson uh, V550. It's specifically made to scan prints and inside of that is this little tray. Um, as you see, I put some of the strips of film that I shot in here uh, and I just blow some compressed air in there to get rid of all of the little hair and dust scratches that might be on the film while it was drying. Um, that slides into the bed of the scanner um, and here I have an example of some of the film that I had just scanned and you know, I'm still kind of learning this process so I don't get every photo right all the time. So. Right here, you know, there's some severely underexposed photos, so those are unusable while we have some other really cool clips. So I'm here, I'm using this program called Silverfast. Um, it's for the Epson scanner, uh, and these are just some of the photos that were in the film that I just developed. So whenever I scan these photos, it's always a little bit of a surprise because a lot of these photos I took a long time ago. Some of these photos were from a trip that Jess and I did in Philly uh, back in February, and it was just a surprise to scan them and see those photos that I completely forgot that I took, uh, which is part of the process that I really enjoy. So I'm going to share with you some of the photos that were in these two rolls of film that I just developed, and hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. 